Hey guys, we got subscriber Scott back. Is it he unsubscribed? No, I'm still subscribed. <laughs> he's still subscribed. You're probably wondering where he's been. Well, he got called back to work and he's been busy on his own channel, so you can check him out. Canadian Outdoorsman. Anyway, I'll link that down below, right? Yep. We got Canadian a Canadian Outdoorsman. Canadian Outdoorsman. As you can tell from my shirt, I don't usually wear crested shirts, but uh, Mr. Taco Box sent me some really cool gear and uh, they're doing a Father's Day promotion. So you guys are gonna go use the code SAVE15. That's gonna get you 15% off your Mystery Tackle Box. And then on Carl's Bait and Tackle, they've got 60% off a whole variety of gear. So check them out. Mystery Tackle Box, these guys know, get sent out by month. So it's a perfect Father's Day gift. Bring your dads out. Or if you are a dad, you just buy it for yourself and you say, hey kids, guess what you guys got me? And you get a you get a Father's Day gift every single month. What comes in the Tackle Box is a complete mystery. Or you can go pick what you want or you can go pick out what your dad wants on Carl's Bait. We got a, a variety of gear. Uh, Scott's gonna be on the rod today, and I've got Sweet Longbow by Ray from Riverbed Longbow. So if you guys want a custom made bow, you can grab that too. But I've never, I've never used this on fish before, so we're gonna rig it up with the GoPro. But my main goal today is actually to catch some carp because I wanna do the ultimate maggot feeder at the pond. Between you and I, we should be able to get maybe one or two slug them out hopefully and then rig up a nice system where i can actually fatten up my trout and we're also going to do a catch and cook as well today oh i forgot about that scott brought all the food today well the, yep. the additives he didn't bring the carp so we got no it. so we're going to catch well a carp or there is a possibility for a trout in here it's very slim <laughs> but there is a possibility for it so if we catch whatever we catch we're going to cook up today and we're going to make some uh fish tacos with it so that sounds really good not a lot of people eat carp but we, they're edible. They're actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, I encourage you to catch a trout. <laughs> I hope you catch a trout, but we're gonna eat whatever we catch. Yeah. Deal? Yep. All right, guys, well, we're all rigged up with the bow. I'm just gonna go with the fiberglass air for starters now, just to make sure we get like, you know, one fish down kind of thing. Scott's already down there. He's got a line that's wet. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be more successful than Scott, but we'll see, because we don't have to wait, to wait for the fish to bite on this system. And uh, just a little bit of a warning that uh, it's loud down there. And so I'm not really gonna be able to talk you guys through what's happening, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to, you guys get, kind of get the idea of what's going on. I got the GoPro on the boat itself. So we should be able to see like a first person view of uh, what's going on. So let's go down there and let's see if we can't get a fish on the board here. Am I gonna land in here? I'll come over there too. Well, I got a little bit of meat on that guy, but not enough to hold him down. He just scooched out and got away. Get back in there. need to get a fish here. You hungry? I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day yet. No, I just had a couple shots there. One from up top, but that fish was pretty far away. And then all the near fish have gone down in the water column. They're pretty smart. All right, everywhere else is pretty shallow over here, so we can't, uh, This we're pretty much stuck at this one little spot. I'm afraid they can kind of see up a little bit. It'd be nice to go just check out of the pools and see if there's anything out there, but I don't think uh, the water's deep enough to hold those big carp. So I think most of them are gonna be kind of in this vicinity here. And if Scott wants to catch a fish, I can't keep shooting at them over and over again. They gotta, we gotta stop them getting scoop, spooked all the time. So I have to mix it up and uh, take, get away from the water, come back, let them rest up and then uh, get back at it. You can tell that happened. Robbed. Completely robbed. Way, way over there. See the mic they got? Oh, there he is. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big fish. 
Yeah, he doesn't like the feel on that. <laughs> uh, what pound test you got on there? Uh, I think it's 12. Okay. Not your two pound lead or anything? No. Nope. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Oh, one more. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. That's a big fish. That is a big carp. Uh, come this way here. We're good this way. Nicely done. We get yeah. To, we get to eat. It's funny. We're just standing around talking about how we're going to be eating vegan, vegan wraps. Vegan tacos. <laughs> and then this sucker hits. That's a nice big. That's a nice big carp. So the rest of it's going to be, going to be maggot feed for my trout. My trout are going to get nice and big and fat. They're going to feed us twice. Exactly. They definitely come down in the water column just from us being around here. So they're, they're pretty smart that way. But uh, we'll get this guy cleaned up and then maybe we'll fire lunch up and then we can raid around and see what else happens. Yeah. Maybe they'll come. Maybe if we go take a rest and have lunch, we come back, they'll be back up again. Yeah. That might be sure. our best bet. Nice and big. There we go, we got a nice slab of meat there. You see how red it is? And we still bled it. There's still tons of blood in there. That means it's gonna be bitter, but that's what you get for a carp. Ah, it came off the bone. That's fine, we don't want that part anyway. Nope. Yummy! <laughs> Look how red that meat is. See, if we were smart, we would cut off all the red stuff. We'll do that after, maybe. That's going to be the bitter part, the red. It's full of blood. I uh, just came up, up river here, just above the dam. And just to see if I can't see any fish up here. And uh, so far, I'm, all I'm turning up is, uh, it's pretty muddy. <laughs> Might be a nice, another nice spot to set up here. Maybe even for a night, like night fish or a catfish. I don't know. It's pretty neat up here. Very shallow, but it's very chocolatey water. So you can't really see anything down in there. Even if there was a fish, you would be, you just have to guess. I mean, it's so dark, it's so, the water's just mud. I don't know if this river ever clears up at all, or if it just gets muddy every time it rains, but it seems like every time I've ever come here, it's been muddy. Otherwise we could just like, you know, troll up and down the river here. It's all flat water. As far as the eye can see. I like the spot one in here though. I think it'd be easier this way. But you can try whatever you want. Let those fish rest up and then hopefully we can get another crack at them. I got uh, that whole carp in my backpack here for my fish food. I'm gonna somehow climb up over here. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Someone did their stretches this morning. <laughs> so climbing over the dam. I'm all limbered up now. Whew. Okay, here we go. It's nice and quiet up here. That's why I want to get away from the waterfall. As much as it's annoying on camera, it's also annoying in person. I mean, not annoying. Annoying is the wrong word, but uh, hey, anybody, if you know anybody who lives on the ocean, they will often complain to you about how it drives them mad. Just the sound of the water all the time, constantly. I'm not talking about water like in California. I'm talking about water, like heavy water, like Nova Scotia water, angry water, just pounding water. My brother went up there and that's what, uh, that's what they said. <laughs> It said it just drives them bonkers after a while. They go mad. When they sleep, they have soundproof walls and everything like that, or they sleep in their basement. If you ever decide you want to buy a waterfront property, make sure it's not on a raging river or near a waterfall. It might drive you mad. I think Scott's going to toss his rod in the water here because this is a, it's a pretty good spot actually for, I don't know, maybe a catfish. Maybe we can trade up or trade sideways. No, a catfish is definitely better than carp. But well, we're going to give it a good run here. I might be more picky on that filet get some of that red out but yeah there could be some cats in here i mean there could be anything it's supposed to be trout in here mud colored water this is like texas water this is san antonio river water for sure it's just straight up mud it's uh and no luck with the bow but 
I'll keep uh, I'll keep at it. It's one of those spots like we had to I had to get my first two shots as hits, and I did actually hit that first one. I just uh, not sure how much uh, penetration I got, and I wasn't sure how much pull I should have put into it. Because the bow, you only need about 25 pounds in in order to make a go of it. So I think that bow is like 40, 40 pound draw. Let's we'll see if we can't double up, get another fish. That's what it's good. It's good to have multiple people and multiple different techniques too, because you never know. I could have been the guy who just like slayed the fish and then the fish weren't biting, we wouldn't have caught one. So we had uh, different techniques and uh, one of them worked and one of them didn't. So there you go. That's why you fish with multiple people. Somebody's going to be lucky. We're so set up today. Scott's rocking the catch and cooks these days. We got a, we got a grill today. I got a little portable camping stove. Runs on butane canisters. <laughs> So that's kind of cool. Wow, look at that. That's pretty neat. Well, that's going to make short work of that fish. Yeah, it should, hopefully. <laughs> we got two extra cans just in case we run out. Yeah, so. we don't have to make a big fire here. We can't actually do it here because we're we're pretty close to uh, an urban center. So if we made a fire, they might send the fire department. <laughs> there's a possibility for that. So. Absolutely. And we actually, there's some people walking around all the time. I ran into a couple people and gave them a whole lesson on uh, my bow. <laughs> they were pretty impressed. They, uh, they really enjoyed seeing those stone points and all that stuff. We're going. There we go. Nice. Brand new pots and pans, too. Trip to Canadian Tire on the way. Zares. <laughs> That'll work. Here's my contribution. We got some adobo. The best stuff in the whole wide world. Yeah, you were looking forward to that. I was, actually. <laughs> You're like, don't forget it. I'm like, it's in my car. Oh yeah, this stuff's gonna be good and it's gonna make everything taste a heck of a lot better. So we've actually got some big news with the spice. Listen to this, Scott. So we just got a whole bunch of the Aces, First Cast, and the Wooded Beardsman's Wadobo in for sale on the website. Help us out, you're gonna need to buy some because four pallets, 6,000 pounds. It's all gotta go into the entryway of my house for now until uh, we can clean up some space and the new shipping and handling inside the barn here. So if you haven't uh, bought some already, help us out and buy some. Go fast, go fast, come go on, fast. come on, move, move. What are you doing to me? <laughs> if you can dodge a Wadobo, you can dodge a dodgeball. All right, boys, you got some Wadobo. Yeah, team. Oh, he burnt the bottom off. I forgot that there was a <laughs> sticker on it. <laughs> it's that new. Look, he burnt it off perfectly. You don't have to pick it. That was actually perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. She got mushrooms. Oh, oh yeah. man, so fancy. I got some mushrooms here. I got some green peppers, some red peppers, and some red onion and a tomato. Dude, we don't deserve all this. I, maybe I don't deserve all this. I, I didn't even catch a, didn't even catch a fish. Not yet. Well, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back, we're gonna make that happen. It's not just olive oil, it's actually roasted garlic olive oil. So it tastes really good. And as soon as I open this, I can actually smell the garlic in it. So, now a little more of that. Yeah, you can smell the garlic right in it. It smells really good. It went. <laughs> more? Oh dude, you can throw the whole bottle in there, I wouldn't care. <laughs> You want to chunk it? Might chunk a little bit out of it. You want to cook it? Those Y bones. <laughs> you going to be cooking them out? Might be. Oh, that meat's pretty tough. Firmed up pretty good. I don't know if it's just because it's not cooked or if it's like kind of like steak like. And there's a ton of bones in there. So I think their idea over here will just cook it up and then we'll shred it and then pick all the bones out. So kind of have like a fish mash. I think that's the best way to go about. There's a lot of recipes that talk about making carp. That's something that you can actually eat. And one of the biggest things is just to cook it and then just pick all the bones out. And then you kind of have fish burgers. A lot of people have been trying to do with that invasive carp where they, they try to figure out different ways to cook them. And the, the fish doesn't actually taste bad except for, like say, the bloodline in there. But uh, fish meat's fish meat. My mouth is watering. <laughs> so that's a good sign. <laughs> I, am pretty, I am pretty hungry. Probably should put some adobo on the fish as well, and uh, lots of oil. Maybe that'll be the that'll be the trick. Oh, that's a lot of spice. Beauty. I'm not complaining. No, I'm not going to complain either. Oh, 
They're in there. They're in there, just solid. <laughs> I think some of them are melting, actually. Not all of them, but some of them. You just want the daggers out. Put some daggers in there. Is that a dagger? Yeah. yeah. That's a big one. Like all those, right there. If they're all big like that, they, they'll be easy to pick out. So it looks pretty good. That's all our fish mash deboned. And uh, have a little taste test here. I got a piece of the whitest meat I could find here. It's not bad. It's not great, it's not bad. It's kind of like, I know when you, you pan fish in like water that's just too warm to eat the pan fish. Yeah. That's kind of what it tastes like to me. It's not terrible, but I would say it's like not top 10 fish. It is, it's definitely edible. I mean, I could eat two bites of it. That's good. But I think if you mix it in with everything else, you're not gonna be able to be like, oh, that's, it's good except for the fish. But I can definitely see why people would uh, harvest these and put them in their garden for fertilizer, put it that way. So it's gonna make really good maggot bait. <laughs> Wraps and we can eat. Yep, I'm just got a little bit of touch of oil in it, threw it in top, moved it around a little bit, and then I just keep giving her the flip to doodle and once they're done, I'll pull it off and let you eat. That looks all right, doesn't it? I mean, you're not gonna turn your nose up at a meal like that. It's all got the, all the regular foods in that people love. And then maybe one thing in there you hide in. It's like kids, yep. you know, you, you hide in the vegetables in with that meal and then maybe you might fool a couple people. Maybe you won't, I don't know. All right, cheers. Oh, cheers to carp. <laughs> yep. Hmm. I shouldn't eat over top. Mmm. We got the tray here, so we can have as many servings as we want. Uh oh. I had a bone there, but. Oh, not yet for me. Oh, I do. There we go. Look at that. Again, unlucky. Look at that thing. We do not want to swallow that. That would, that would, that would come back to haunt you. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's a big bone. About a seven. Yeah, I'd say seven. I think if we just ate carp on itself, it's probably like a two or three. This carp, I'd give it a four. <laughs> this is actually pretty good. It's not bad. With the wadobo and the garlic oil on it, it helped it a lot. A lot of oil. Yeah. A lot of oil helped it a lot. There's still a lot of oil There's in there. There's still a lot of oil in there. Yeah, we'll eat, we're gonna eat this and we're gonna go back and see if those carp are up on the surface again. I wanna shoot one. Oh, that was actually better than I thought. I had three, so if that's not a testament to how good they are, could have just ate one, one and done. So, I don't know. Still, I was not gonna rate it high. I'm not gonna give it like a 10 out of 10, but I think we, we agree, what, seven? Seven, yeah. Seven. Seven's, seven, seven's edible all day long. You can live off of it. So it's just not gonna be like, oh, it's not, it's not beaver. It's not beaver burgers. Those are like nine, 10. And uh, I don't think Scott believes me, but maybe one day he'll get a chance to try some. I got some in the freezer, kept them all. I'm gonna, that's my goal this, this fall, is I'm gonna, rather than go after like a ton of deer, a ton of deer are like one, <laughs> that's all I can get anyway, I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna fill my freezer up with this beaver meat. Well, that was a good lunch, let me tell you what. Now we can get back at it. It's nice to take a little bit of a break right in the middle of the day, to see if you can't turn things around, give those fish a little bit of a break. We need one more fish for our maggot feeder. That'll be plenty. I don't think I can honestly backpack out any more than two giant carp. So get more, one more, we'll be all set. So let's get out there, see what we can make happen. How far? I can raise them from here. Oh, I see him, get out of the way. Get out of the way. <laughs> I'm gonna go for the wet one. Can I get on the log though? Oh, I'm gonna bail. <laughs> what did I do for a fish? My feet didn't actually get wet there. That's right through wet. Oh well, get wet feet now. I'm gonna cram across the log and uh, see if we can't uh, get a shot. Are they still there? Rotten logs. Oh boy. They were surfacing over at the far end trying to avoid us over here. Well, this is the perfect, perfect view now for hunting fish. I can see everything. It's whether or not the fish are gonna be brave enough to come up now that we're here. They're, they're smart, man. They see you and they, they go down. You see another one? Scott sees no, I gotta keep climbing.
Which way is it facing left? That way. No, I see it. Oh, just a little bit over. Well, that didn't turn out. I was shot in a miss. I should probably concentrate on what I'm doing here, but maybe I'll vlog my way over the falls. It's not a funny joke. I don't know why I was fighting on the reel. I shouldn't have done that. I didn't really have any place to put the bow. Good job. <laughs> right on. Whew, there we go. This is like sheer persistence, man. All I had was one little bit of a tail just over the rock and I had to kind of thread the needle in there. And I was actually worried because I put the GoPro on and I was worried it was going to take off in the meantime, but it was just like nuzzling down there. I think Scott threw the corn down there so it was actually down there feeding. So I think that's what did the trick. They're not spawning yet. That's when you want to catch them, when they're like actually in the shallows and they're not really paying attention to what's going on. So now I got two for my maggot feeder. So that's probably going to be on the next video. So you guys follow along, we're all set. We got everything we need. Well, we could use one more to be real. But uh, that, this whole thing's going to get converted into trout, trout biomass. That's my hope with the maggot feeder. So catch me on the next one. Catch you guys on the next one. Wicked, I'm glad it turned out, man, that's awesome.